Hi guys, Ash47 here with another devlog update. I'd just like to let you know that we're still working on updates. Hopefully we'll have something worthwhile sharing soon, so make sure you stay tuned. In the meantime, I thought I'd share some behind the scenes information with you. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at exactly what a ZX save file is and what's inside. So, if you jump over to Documents, My Games, They Are Billions, and then Saves, you'll see this is where your save files are stored. What is a ZX save file? It's literally just a zip file. So if you right click on this and go rename, and then you change it to .zip at the very end, like that, you can see there's a zip file. So then you can just extract that with any standard zip tools. So I'm just gonna extract that with 7-zip. So right click, 7-zip, extract to as a 46.zx save. And there we go, it's extracted. So inside of there, you can see there's two files. There's data and there's info. What I like to do is I like to rename the data file to .xml. There we go, that's been renamed. So now you can open this with your favorite text editor. I like to use Sublime Text 3, it works extremely well. So let's go ahead and open that. Okay, so the file is opened, and now what I like to do firstly, if you jump up to the view section and turn off word wrap, I'd highly recommend that. So now you can see a lot more of the file at once. So what we're going to do quickly is we're going to come through this file and we're going to have a look at some of the common things that Level Editor interacts with, and we're going to show you exactly how the save file format works. So let's just start at the top and work our way down. So the first thing we're going to look at is the Level Entities. Just like in the level editor, this has all your entities, such as the buildings, some of the zombies, and items such as the pick upable gold. So you can see they're broken up into sections. You have an, one item for each section. So if we hide some of these, you can see there's a whole bunch of different items in here. You can see all the properties you would see in the level editor, like the team, whether it's enabled or not. You can see there's a whole bunch of things in here the level editor doesn't let you touch. I think most of this is kind of useless to actually edit. That's why we don't bother letting you edit it. If you come all the way down, you can see this is still part of the same item. So there's one of the most important things. There's the position. So just like in the level editor, you have an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. So that covers off the level entity section. So what we're going to do is we're going to minimize that using this button over here. And now we can come down to the next section. This section here, level fast serialized entities, this actually contains all of the zombies. So this section is broken again into multiple items, but this one works a little bit different. This first item here actually represents a zombie kind. So this number here, this might represent a harpy or a tuxedo zombie or any other kind of zombie. And then if you look below that, we have a section for items again. Each one of these represents one zombie. You can see that's a zombie, that's a zombie, that's a zombie. They're all of the exact same kind. They're all this number here, whatever number that is. And then the two different properties, you have the entity ID, which is kind of useless. In the level editor, it automatically gets changed to a sequential number. So these would probably get changed to numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. And then the more important thing is the coordinates. So again, X and Y coordinates. And this is the reason that you can't actually edit zombies right now. If you come down quite a fair bit, you can see there is a ridiculous number of zombies here. That's why it's so difficult to actually implement zombies. So we need to convert these X and Y coordinates into something that's actually usable. And the main issue with that is going to be the decimal places. So you can see just, you need four or five decimal places to represent these. That is a huge issue. At the moment, the level editor only represents up to the whole numbers. So we need to find a really nice way to draw this on the map. Until we can figure that out, it's going to be hard to edit zombies. So we're going to go ahead and minimize this section now and move on to the next one. If we come down here, there's a few things that at this stage, we're not really sure what they do. So we need to do a whole bunch more research to guess. This entire process is basically a guessing game. We actually figured out what these are by taking an educated guess. These ones are kind of obvious. To come down these other ones, not so obvious. Uh, level persistent scene objects, not really sure what that is. Only one executed commands finished, again, not really sure. We haven't actually hooked into this one down here yet, the ref entity selection groups, but we can probably take a good educated guess as to what it is. So in the game, you can actually press control one, control two, etc., and you can make selection groups. I assume that this is the selection groups you've made in game, so this is where it gets saved. But again, we haven't looked into that because it doesn't sound very useful to edit. So we'll go ahead and minimize that. We'll continue coming down. I have no clue what ID images used by Mayers is. I imagine that maybe you can change the, the images of the Mayers that appear, but I'm not really too sure. The Mayer state section, this section actually contains each of the Mayers that you've selected. So it has, again, two keys. It has a key which represents the Mayer number. So it would be like the first Mayer you select, the second Mayer you select, the third Mayer. And then it has another value for that which is the may you actually selected. Unfortunately, it's just a number, so you can't actually give yourself arbitrary amounts of gold or arbitrary things. 
It just has a number which represents the mayor you selected. But you can't actually see that here because in this save file, we haven't selected any mayors yet. If we continue to come down here, we can see the level camera area. I'm not 100% sure what this represents, but I have a feeling that this, this value here, these four values, they represent exactly where the camera is when you actually save the game. So if we wanted to make the camera start somewhere differently, we'd probably have to edit these values. But that's something we need to look into in the future. Directly below that, we have the layer fog. If you think about the level editor, it allows you to edit the fog layer. This is what you're actually editing. It's a whole bunch of random jibber jabber. If you come down directly below that, there's layer activity. I'm not really sure what this is, and I don't know why it's a much smaller value. It seems like whatever size you have, it's always one fourth of that size. So this is a 256 by 256 map. So 64 is one fourth of 256. I'm not sure what layer activity does. Directly below that, we have the bonus entity templates. When you select certain mayors, you get extra entities, such as a bonus ranger. So those bonus entities appear in this section here. So at this stage, the level editor allows you to edit that, and this is exactly what it fills up. So this section would contain two keys. You would have the entity type, such as a ranger or a building, and then you'd have the number of that entity that you can actually spawn. Directly below that is the Sur Terrain Resource Cells. This is a rather interesting layer. This layer is actually a combination of the terrain and the object layer. This is a very important layer if you actually want to be able to mine resources or if you want to place things. You can actually edit this layer to allow you to place something anywhere you like. So depending on the values of this layer, you can actually build inside water. So even though the map draws water on the map, this layer here determines if you are actually allowed to build there. So below that we have the current command center cell. I haven't really experimented exactly with what this is, but I believe this points to where the current command center is. So what that means, if your command center isn't at 128, 128, it'll actually flash on and off. So if you want to actually prevent it from flashing on and off, you need to change this value here. Unfortunately, at this stage, the level editor doesn't allow you to edit that value. Hopefully in a future update, we'll make it so that you can edit that. So if we come down straight below that, we have level events. So these are the events such as the final wave and all the other waves that actually spawn along the way. Anyone who's familiar with the level editor may recognize all these values. These are the exact values that show in the level editor. So if you come down, you can actually see it literally says, infected coming from every direction. They are billions. Let's go ahead and minimize the level events and we'll come down a little bit more. So we have some interesting properties here. These ones haven't actually been included in the level editor yet, but they're, they're kind of interesting. So there's perspective, which says isometric. It'd be rather interesting to play with this and see if we can actually change the perspective of the player. Depending on the way the, the art is actually rendered, it may or may not be possible, but it'd be interesting to play with this. Right below that, we have the playable area. This one, we spend a lot of time trying to figure out. So this represents literally the playable area, of course. It's where the camera can actually move up to. So what we figured out, these first two coordinates, this is the very top middle of the map. And then if you go 54 plus 148 for both of these coordinates, it corresponds to the very bottom middle of the map. Now that took a very, very long time to work out. And we use that to draw the border in the map that's shown at, the, at this stage. If we come down below that, we have the factor playable area. This one isn't actually used in the game, but we did figure out what it does. It actually scales back this area to be smaller. So the way that this is actually used, if you've seen the 384 by 384 template, it's actually used in that scenario. So you have a map which is 512 by 512, but you only want 384 by 384 playable. So what you do, you set a 0.75 factor playable area and that achieves 384 by 384. So that's how that works. Below that, we have some interesting values. These ones, I assume, allow you to change the color of the map and the, you know, the brightness, the saturation, the hue. So you can literally make maps that are colored in different ways. Sounds kind of interesting. Hopefully we can hook that in in the level editor in the future. So let's continue to scroll down. Now we're reaching some of the really interesting stuff. So we have the layer terrain. This is literally, as you see in the game, this is the terrain layer. So once again, it's represented by a whole bunch of random looking data. So a whole bunch of A's. That translates to actually the terrain. And then right below that, we have objects and then roads. So these three are in the level editor right now, and you can edit those. So you can see exactly how they're represented. There's a lot of data there. Once again, 256 by 256 cells. So about 65,000. And now you might've seen this right now and thought, wow, that's actually, there's a layer for zombies. But unfortunately, that's not really the case. From the experimentation we've done, if you think about the minimap, there is a layer for zombies in the minimap. Unfortunately, when you edit this layer, it doesn't actually update in game. So I think that they're actually wasting storage space by even storing this. It doesn't seem to actually affect anything when we edit this layer, which is really unfortunate. So let's continue to come down now. We see the extra entity section. So if you think about the level editor, there's a section called extra entities, which is this section here. This is the reason why it took so long to add the oil sources. 
The oil sources and the scenery objects are stored in the extra entity section. When I say scenery, the most common scenery. So if you think about pick upable gold, pick upable oil, all those things, there's a piece of wood underneath those or a piece of rubble, depending on how you look at it. That's actually stored in this section. So we have the oil sources and well, I guess the rubble. So if we come down, you can see there's an oil source. So this is actually what we hooked into when we added oil source editing to the level editor. So you can see there's the properties, like the position. Pretty much all we do is we allow you to edit these values. So if we come right back up, let's go ahead and hide the extra entity section. We'll continue to come down. So now we've arrived at the map property section. So most of these properties we allow you to directly edit in the level editor. So anyone who's been in the map property section will be familiar with these. So they're rather interesting values. Once again, not 100% sure what all of these do. We need to do more experimentation, but you can edit these in the level editor. So let's continue to come down now. We've reached some more map properties, so game time, game speed, all the physics values. Once again, you can edit those in the level editor. The date value, I don't know what the purpose of having this is. It doesn't seem to be used anywhere at this stage. I'm not really sure exactly what this does. If we come down, this is something extremely exciting, campaign state. So it might actually be possible to turn the campaign on using this value or changing it in a certain way. Unfortunately, we don't know what to change it to. And once again, it's a guessing game. Right down below that, we have the name value. This one is incredibly important. So some people actually notice that when you save a map with a different file name and then you load it up in game and then you save it again, it'll actually revert to the original name. Well, this is the original name it's reverting to. It's reverting to, in this case, as a 46. So you need to update this value if you want the save file to be consistent with your file name. So right below that, we have the seed. So anyone who's played Minecraft, you might be familiar with the seed. You enter a seed and then the level's randomly generated based on that seed. That's literally what this is. Unfortunately, the seed here is only used once, which is at the very start when the map's being generated. So editing this value doesn't really have any effect, which is very unfortunate. We come down below that, we have the theme type. So each of the four themes is represented by a two letter value. So TM is gonna be the second theme. So we've had a look through the code and we can only find four themes, unfortunately. So there's nothing really hidden here. It's pretty simple. We haven't tested what happens if you try to put a theme that isn't available. It might be an interesting test case. Directly below that, we have these three. So these three represent the game duration. So that'd be like the number of days, like 80 days, 100 days, that sort of thing. We have the zombie population, which is like, do you want it to be heavily populated or hardly any zombies? And then we have the difficulty, which I believe is calculated based on these values. Changing these values doesn't really affect anything in game besides your score. So it's not really that important to add to the level editor. We'll probably add these in a future update eventually, but they don't really change anything. So it's kind of pointless. So that's about it for the ZX save file format. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to smash that like button and leave a comment below. Be sure to subscribe for more updates regarding the level editor.